All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to Veer Northwest, welcome to church, live stream peeps. I don't see you, but I love you, welcome. So glad that you are on your computer or phone right now. Everyone that's here, I'm glad you're here. Seriously happy you're with us this morning. My name is Wilson, I'm one of the pastors here. And this morning is actually really special. It's an all worship Sunday. Come on, it's gonna be good. So we have a good new and good friend of our church in the house, Peter Mattis. Peter. Peter is a leader at Bethel Reading. He leads their online um, school of supernatural ministry. And he's a real son there, just amazing. We love you. Receive everything you're bringing this morning, bro. Um, do you guys want to stand up with me? I'm just going to tell you a couple of details, and then my dad is coming up to lead us. He, he has some really important kind of reflections for us as a church. But really quick, a couple of details this morning. Um, feel free to worship wherever you want, all right? So, like, if you want to come down to the front, you can come down here in the front and worship. If you want to go in the back and worship, you can go down, you can go down in the back. Um, but, yeah, just be free to worship wherever you want. Our mask... The mask kind of policy, well, yeah, mask policy around here is we ask that you wear a mask except for when you're seated. So that's how we're handling that right now. And if you want to go get your kids and bring them in here to worship, then I think that's a really great idea. Just don't do it like 25 times. You can go get them once and bring them in here, then drop them back off. But don't like every other song, get your kids and drop them off or anything like that. But it'd be really great to bring them in here for a portion of worship, honestly. So do you want to come up, senior pastor? Hey, good morning. Thank you for that uh, welcome. You can have a seat. It's going to take a couple minutes. I want to talk um, with you for a moment about what's happening politically right now in the country. And um, uh, this is kind of like an email that I've written that I'm just going to kind of read to you, maybe a few side comments. But uh, first, here's what I want to say. Whoever our president is, we owe that leader good citizenship we owe them honor, and we owe them support in prayer, whoever will end up be as president. And when we say honor, I mean honor from the heart. Uh, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you can check whether or not you're honoring in your heart by what you're saying with your mouth. But we honor. And we need to recognize this. Donald Trump still is our president right now, will be for another couple of months. So we need to be praying for him and, and uh, really supporting him in prayer. At this point, it looks like Vice President Biden will become President Biden. And when that happens, we honor him and we will pray for him and offer our support and prayer there. Now the second, the situation that we're in, normal process is that whoever uh, has the fewer votes after election day concedes. And what, what that means is they make a public statement that they are not going to challenge the election. They're not going to challenge the count or the processes or ask for recounts. Uh, in this case, President Trump has chosen to challenge the outcome of the election. And he's free to do that. And this has happened several times in our country. It's not a new thing right now for this to happen. In fact, uh, in the year 2000, the presidential election was decided based on a decision made in the Supreme Court. So that recently, uh, something like this happened. But um, myself, as I look at the whole thing, I just want truth to come out. And I honestly mean that whatever that means, whichever side, truth come out. And um, then the winner is my president. That's it right there. Whoever is, whoever is the winner is my president. Now, third, we have to be careful not to put our hope in government. Amen. And I think as an evangelical church, as a charismatic church, by and large, we put our hope in government in many respects. And we need to recognize the limitations of government, that government cannot usher in the kingdom of God. Government can make laws that reflect kingdom values, but government can't change people's hearts. 
government can't bring in the presence of God. Government can't welcome Jesus in, into the world. That is the domain of the church. That is the church's commission. Our commission is we bring the kingdom of God into the world. Now, don't, get, don't, don't misunderstand. I want to have godly people in office. We want that. No doubt about that. We want that. But we have to recognize the limitations of government, and we don't want to confuse the role of the church with government. And again, I'm not talking about separation of church and state because the church should influence the government. But um, this is our commission is to bring the kingdom. Fourth thing is this, people are never the enemy. Ephesians 6 says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and evil spiritual forces in the heavenly places. So whatever issue is important to you, whether it's abortion or racial disparity issues, whatever issue is important to you, that person that you are in a debate with is not your enemy. There are spiritual principalities behind the scene that are manipulating people and stirring these issues. And if you and I approach the whole thing as it's just between me and this person I disagree with, then what we're doing is we're playing right into the hand of the enemy. And so the per- people are never, never the enemy. If I attack other people, if I, if I fail to love and honor people that I disagree with, then I am playing into the enemy's hands. Well, fifth is this, whatever the outcome, and again, it does look like Vice President Biden is going to win, whatever the outcome, we do not put our hope in man. We do not put our hope, the Bible says don't put your hope in princes. And, 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 and we need to recognize we do not put our hope in, in princes or in man or any political system or any political party. Listen, we may support a political candidate, but we follow Jesus. We don't follow that candidate. I'm not modeling my life after the political. I follow Jesus. And here's some really good news. Jesus never panics. You know that? He doesn't panic. So sixth is this. We as a church have authority and power to welcome in the kingdom of God, and it's time for the church to rise up. It's time for the church to recognize, to to set aside having our hope in a political candidate or a political party or process and put our hope in Jesus and rise up and use the authority that he's given to us to impact this world and to welcome and usher the kingdom of God in. And that happens through, that's good. And seventh is this, I still believe we're on the brink of a massive worldwide revival. And, and all we're seeing right now in all the confusion and chaos is the enemy kicking up a fuss trying to, trying to stop that. And the way we bring that in is through open-hearted, pure worship, through um, prayer, humility. Humility is a key part of ushering in this revival. Love, and it takes courage as a church for us to move with what the Spirit of God's doing and to welcome in the power of the kingdom of God into this world. So, Wilson, I'm going to turn it over to Will. So good. Yes, thank let's, Yeah. <laughs> Moments like these, I'm glad I'm not the senior pastor. Would you guys like to stand up with me again? Actually, why don't you sit? No, I'm just kidding. Why don't you stand up? We're going to worship. Hey, come down to the front. Who wants to worship down here? Just come on down, all right? Make your way down here if you want to worship down here. Um, let's pray on what he just said to kind of put an exclamation point in our hearts that that's going to be our heart posture. Let's pray together. We just release peace over the storm. Jesus, you slept during storms. Right now, we just turn our eyes to you and we say, we're gonna rest, but we release peace over the chaos in Jesus' name. Just extend your hands towards like the walls of the building as an act of like pointing outside of the church. We release peace out there in Jesus' name. Peace out there in Jesus' name. Peace. 
And Father, we, we say, bring your government in a greater measure. We want the government of God manifested on earth in a greater measure, Lord. We set our hearts right now and we say, Lord, we're not gonna be consumed with the American government or man's government. We're obsessed with your government, Jesus. I lay awake at night wondering what angels are out on assignment. I lay awake at night wondering what apostles and prophets are rising up on the earth. Not what presidential candidates and what laws are being passed. Just put your hand on your heart now and say, Lord, Say this if it's true for you. Say, I have confused man's government with your government. I want to get it straight. And this is me, guys. I have totally done this. Lord, I repent for confusing man's government at times with your government. We just say, kingdom of God, God's government come. God's government come on earth. In Jesus' name, by the authority of Jesus, we release the kingdom on earth. We release the kingdom into Washington, D.C. right now. We speak blessing over that, all of our, all of our leaders. Just think, in your, think right now, what's something you're concerned about? Maybe you're not even concerned about anything political right now. Think of something you're concerned about right now. Call, just bring to mind something you're concerned about. Maybe it's about yourself, someone else, a situation. Now, right now, I just want you to be aware that you're seated in heavenly places. You are seated in heavenly places. So right now, just we're going to speak, everyone's going to speak out loud together. We're going to, with that thing we're thinking, we're going to say, kingdom of God, come. Kingdom of God, come into that situation. Speak it out. Kingdom of God, come into that situation. King Jesus, we honor you. We turn our hearts to worship you, Lord of all the earth.
the chains break at the weight of your glory I need a shelter I was an orphan now you've called me a citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open cause when you call my name I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your hope you stay you call my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glory you stay Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good. the key
Cause you are never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down.
stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop.
was remembering when I was a little guy and I would be in worship services in my vineyard church. I grew up in the vineyard church. And I'd uh, bring my sleeping bag and sleep on the floor in the middle of all night prayer sessions and worship sessions kind of like this. And there's no better time for us to gather around Jesus, rejoice in his name and what he's doing, how he's working, how he's moving. There's no better time. And as we were singing, this is who you are. I felt the Lord like singing back to us. This is who you are. Your people of praise is who you are. Your people of praise. You live in praise. It's your weapon of warfare. It doesn't seem very mighty. But it's strong in battle. It's strong in battle. Your weapon of praise. Your weapon of praise.
Love's like a hurricane, I am his tree, bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great for me and oh come on how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so
lift your voice. sense this already, but uh, there's a real grace of the revelation of God's love in the room right now, and many of you are experiencing it, and what the Lord wants to say to you is, carry it with you. It's not just here on Sunday, it's there Tuesday morning and Wednesday afternoon and Friday evening too, so receive that and walk in it, and just tell them right now, I want to walk in this love, I want to walk in your presence like this, tell them that right now in Jesus' name. Some of us might not be experiencing uh, God's love right now, and, and there's a very good likelihood that that's because there are lies you're believing, like, um, I'm not good enough to experience God's love, or I haven't accomplished what God's given me to do, and so how can I experience His love? And it would even be presumptuous of me to say that I'm experiencing God's love. Those are all lies. There's nothing that you can do that could ever earn God's love. There's nothing you can do to earn His love. You just receive it. He loves you just like, just like a, a mom or a dad love their two-year-old child. And you might say, but I fail so much. Well, that two-year-old or that one-year-old falls down 20 times a day trying to walk, and then they get up and they take one step, and what's the parent do? The parent just rejoices in that one step. So the father looks at you like that. He's saying, I know you make mistakes, but you're taking this step, and you're taking this step, and I'm so excited about that, and I love you so much, and I just want to pour my love out on you. So 
I, if this ministers to you, just receive it. But Father, I break the power of the religious spirit that says we have to live up to God's love, that we have to be worthy of it, that we have to perform somehow to experience your love, Father. Because we, we just, we break the power of that spirit. I command it to stop working in every person's life here and, and bring freedom in Jesus' name. I declare freedom. And the Holy Spirit, just pour out more of the love. Pour out more of the love of the Father. Fill our hearts with your love. I think I had a word of knowledge during worship. Is there anyone here named Claire? Anyone here named Claire? All right, well... I'm gonna still give the word and maybe you know, maybe there's someone close to you named Claire, or maybe someone's on a live stream, or very likely I just did not get a word of knowledge. Um, here's what I heard for Claire, two things, that she had been in a skiing accident and that she's being healed. And then also I just felt like God said to you, Claire, maybe you're on the live stream or maybe it's one of your friends um, that you have a gift of, I felt like God said to me that you are an alarmist and in a good way, you bring attention to things that attention needs to be brought to, but there's like a kind of like warning there. Don't do it and don't bring fear into the equation, but bring awareness into things. So I just bless you, Claire, if you're on the live stream or wherever you are, we just, there's someone in the world named Claire who's had a skiing accident. Just kidding. Lord, we bless Claire in Jesus' name. Mm. All right something cool that happened first service that I think God wants to do again is cast demons out of people. So, something I've been noticing in the Gospels is this. Demons, I'm reading through Mark right now, and this just came so clear to me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so odd. Demons are attracted to Jesus. Demons, like, not attracted like in an affectionate way, you know, but attracted like a tractor beam, <laughs> like a, a magnet. Do you notice that? Then in the Gospels, Jesus is preaching somewhere, and what happens? Someone who came in acting normal, all of a sudden a demon starts screaming, ah! and Jesus frees them. Jesus is sailing across, of a, is sailing across the Sea of Galilee, and this crazy storm comes. And what does Jesus do? He rebukes the storm and says peace to it. He rebukes it because there was something demonic in the storm itself. That's why he rebuked it. And then, that's what I believe. Actually, that's what Bill Johnson believes. I heard him say it. Um, and then he gets to the other side and guess who's there? This guy who's possessed with a thousand demons. Legion is what it says in there. He's demonized, he's so oppressed by demons. And, and again, a really interesting thing happens. This man runs to Jesus. He runs to him. Now, demons, like, isn't that counterintuitive? Right? Like, why do they come to him, you know? And all I can make of that is that God's presence is just, like, more on the attack than we think. Like, the presence of God is, like, pressing out and it's pushing things out that aren't of him. And that's what I feel like God's doing here in, the, in this room this morning, that there's um, so much amazing, beautiful worship, beautiful things happening, but God actually says there's freedom here this morning from demonic influence in your life. And this summer I had a really cool experience. I had a demon cast out of me. I had, for about five months in this year, I dreaded having a quiet time. I literally, like, there was no part of me that wanted to go and be with Jesus. I mean, not no part of me, but my desire was, there's no desire there at all. That was really sucky for me. You know, I still pressed in the Lord out of discipline, but it was just so, bleh, it was the worst. And you know that, what, you know what that sounds like to me? Something a demon would do. <laughs> not something that new Wilson would do. So what I want to tell you is, and then I, I had a, a mentor in my life. We talked about it, he prayed for me, and he said, I just break the spirit of religion. I command the spirit of religion to come off of you right now. And guys, I kid you not, I felt like a shirt was taken off of me. I, just, I felt like, 
a presence go off, leave me, you know? And uh, so what I wanna tell you is there's freedom like that here for people this morning. People who struggle with compulsive behavior that you do not want. There's a potential that that's a actual a stronghold and there's a spirit that has influence and is grabbing hold right there. Um, thoughts that you just can't get out of your mind. That you're like, man, that's not me. Why am I? Maybe that's an actual demonic spirit. Like, check it out. A soldier doesn't feel guilty because they've been shot, right? If a soldier is running at the enemy, trying to take him out and he gets shot, we're like, give that guy a medal. We're like, that's amazing, bless him for, I mean, th that's what it's, th that's very similar to what it's like to have a demon grab on you or attack you. You're in a war. We're in a war, okay? Like we should, getting shot happens. It, it happens and it's really okay. Like there's no shame in having gotten shot because that means you're in the war. Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> you're in the war, come on. So will you guys stand up with me? Um, I just want you to close your eyes, okay? And if, as I'm talking right now, you just felt a pull in your heart, or this is kind of making sense to you, what I'm saying, then, and you feel like, man, okay, this might be something. For, like, maybe I need some freedom. Maybe I need some deliverance. Maybe I need a demon cast out of me. We don't, I don't totally get what it means to the demon's in us. Like, who cares about the language? You want freedom, right? I just want you to raise your hand, okay? If this identifies, if you're like, I identify with this, I feel like there might be spirits attacking me. I don't know why exactly, but I feel like there might be something there. Raise your hand. I wanna tell you that just because you have your hand raised does not mean you are right. Just want you to know that, okay? Some of you do have your hands raised and you actually do not have a demon at all. Some of you, unfortunately, have your hands down and do have one, but whatever. <laughs> so. Now I want everyone in the room to open their eyes and go to someone with their hand up and put your hand on their shoulder, all right? I wanted more people to raise their hands than would have if you had had your eyes open the whole time. So I tricked you. Go to someone with their hand up. Someone go to right over here, the hand up. Another person has a hand up right here. Could you go over there, bro? That's awesome. I need a couple people to come down front right now who aren't touching anybody. Or you two, just put hands on each other, put a hand on each other's shoulder, okay? Right in front of you guys, um, could you guys get a hand on them, please? Kevin, Barth, will you leave and go and put a hand on them? Turn around all the way and you'll see them. There you go, right there, yep. All right, so right now freedom is about to come. It's gonna be really sweet. Jesus, thank you so much for your power. Oh man, you're so powerful, it's wild. It's amazing how powerful you are. You are powerful, Jesus. You are powerful, Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name, I bind unclean spirits in this room on my friends, and I say, out in Jesus' name, now. Out now, in Jesus' name. Out now. And some of you guys raise your hands. What's actually happening to you is there's just like an assignment against you it's not something you've ever agreed with, but it's just assaulting you. And so right now for those people, I just, I tell that assignment, ha. <laughs> okay? By the higher authority of Christ, I break your assignment. I cancel it. <laughs> Thank you for joy. I break that assignment in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name right now. If you, have, if you pray in tongues, if you have a prayer language, go ahead and just pray in tongues over the person. Just bless them. If you don't have a prayer language, just speak, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. Just speak that over them. Things that are resisting me right now, spirits that are resisting me, I bind you and I say, get out in Jesus' name. I bind you and I say, get out in Jesus' name. Thank you for angelic ministry backing me up right now. Swords are slicing and dicing in the room right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, angels of the living God that exist to do ministry for the saints.
And now just say this over the person. Just say, I bless you. And I just speak a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit over you. Fill them up, Father. Fill them up. Give them wisdom on renewing their mind. Help them renew their mind. Yeah. All right, whenever you're done ministering to them, you can just head back to your seat, and I'm going to pray us back into some more worship. Thank you for freedom, God. Thank you that it's just part of the kingdom breaking in. This is part of the kingdom breaking in, displacing darkness. It's the same when we pray for healing. That's, that's the kingdom of God breaking in and healing someone's body. When we pray for this, we're commanding evil forces to stop afflicting them. It's the same dynamic. Um, Really quick, if you got prayer, if you were getting prayer, sometimes when you get freedom, you feel it. Like oftentimes I would say that if you get free from something, you feel a shift in your heart, like you just know it, or physically you feel like how I felt something lift off my body. So if when you were just getting prayer right now and you felt an actual shift happen, will you just wave your hand at me really quick? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for freedom, God. Thank you for everything you just did. Honor to you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We celebrate you. You just scored a touchdown in the fourth quarter. We honor, oh man, we're excited about that. We're so excited about that. Here's the last thing I'm going to say. Peter said earlier that worship is our weapon, and something just clicked in my head. When you use a weapon, you're doing something more than something physical oftentimes. You're doing something emotional too. You know, like warriors in battle, they're not like, what am I going to eat for lunch? Cut your head off. What am I going to do next? And you know, like, they're, um, they're into it. They're exerting something. That's what, that's what our violence is, is worship. So like, it's a chance. If you think you're passionless and you like express passion, no, <laughs> that's not true. You were built to express passion in worship. When we worship with passion, we engage our emotion in it, we're doing violence. We're doing true violence, we're doing war. So Father, we, I, I just release freedom over the room, freedom to worship you, God, with full hearts, with passion, in Jesus' name, amen. I just wanna sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never wanna leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe.
Say that again.
you one last time. You were the of it all. You were the of it all. Everything I have your goodness I would be desperate without your love slave to the darkness if it wasn't for the cross you have won you have won Chase me down when I was lost. Where would I be if it wasn't for the cross? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. Oh, with your blood. You bought my free 
Amazing Sunday. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Wouldn't it be great to just go for another length of time? <laughs> hey, can thank I, you, worship team. Real quick? Yeah, I was sorry. I totally interrupted you. Hey, while, while I was worshiping, I, I, I was brought up in the vineyard. I was a, a vineyard kid running around, bodies slain in the spirit. And with John Wimber, all those guys, just wildness growing up. And, and I, I felt like we, I said this real, real briefly, but while we were singing Waymaker, I, I, you, we're declaring that to the Lord, like, this, that's who you are. And I felt like the Lord coming in, like, I'm putting his finger in our chest, and he's like, that's who you are. And I feel like worship is returning to the vineyard. Um, I, I, I've, uh, one of my dear friends, Jeremy Riddle, he, he just released an album out of Vineyard Anaheim. If you know what that is, it's, it's kind of, the, it was like the first vineyard where John was at. Um, and he just re released an album out of there. And I feel like there's like worship, like returning to roots and like remembering who we are. And I feel like even today, like in the midst of everything going around in our nation, like we're like now to the cross, now to the cross, like not about worship leaders, not about titles or fame or stages or lights, but about the cross of Jesus. And I can feel that even like here among you, like I really feel even like prophetically, like I, I feel like you guys are even like release albums. Like I, I feel like, I feel like even like, like, like musically you're gonna release that. And I feel like there's like, there's like worship in your blood. You can like feel it in the room. There's worship in your blood. I feel like you're like remembering who you are. And yes, it's remembering and recalling, but it's also like unto something new. There is like, there, there, is, there is this like unified sound of newness that's blowing like in this room this morning. I really, really feel it. It's so beautiful. I feel the Lord. I, I really I, I really feel the Lord is like moving among you. And I, I, I really just, just wanna say, like that's not a stage thing, that's a us thing. Like this doesn't work without you, right? And Come on. you don't work without us. So, you know, it's, it's this beautiful like coming together and like building a bridge of unity. And I feel like that's even in the spirit what's happening. The Lord's like building this like unification in, in the spirit of every culture, every race, like coming to the cross. Like now we agree on the cross. This is who we are. And I think as Christians, they're gonna know us by our love. Yeah, and I feel like that that's gonna look and sound like something. And I, I, I even feel just like this like beautiful new like sound coming out of you, like more than just even an album and worship, but it's like a sound of people's hearts um, that it's really, really coming out of you. So bless you guys, love being with you so, so much. Such an honor to be here. Yeah. Thank you, Peter, for real. I wanna, encourage parents in the room who have a kid back there to go get them right now. It'd be really, it's important. Please go get your kids. But if you are a worship leader, if you're a musician, if you feel like you have a call in your life for music, just get down to the front right now because Peter's going to pray over all you guys. So like, Joyful if you're- noises count. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, get down here. At the end of the service, Peter's just going to pray a blessing over um, musicians and worship leaders and all of them, those peeps. So please get down here for that. But bless you guys. Have an amazing week. Um, have an amazing week. Eat some Skyline chili today.